is a model of Easton's 750cc Magic Midget. It weighs only four and a half pounds, but it will travel at over 50 miles an hour. It runs on motor spirit and is driven by a single cylinder, two stroke engine of 5cc capacity, 150 times smaller than the original. The engine is lubricated by mixing oil with the fuel. Ignition is by means of a coil and two ordinary four and a half volt torch batteries. To make it workable, the car can't be an exact scale model of the original in every detail. The car was designed and made at home by Mr. Cruikshank. He started experimenting with model motor cars some years ago, and he's one of the pioneers of this new hobby. During the war, other people took it up and built similar racing cars. Here's another one, a 3.2 litre Alfa Romeo. It was designed and built by Mr. Jones. Unlike most model cars, it has a rear wheel drive. So the steering has to be fitted to the front wheel. Mr. Jones has built Ackerman linkage, exactly as in the full-sized car. This automatically gives each front wheel the correct turning radius. Before racing on the circuit, wheels must always be set to the radius of the track and locked. Otherwise, the cars wouldn't run through and they might be a disaster. Front wheel suspension on this car is by coil springs. whilst at the rear there are double acting coil springs. The driving seat is finished in imitation leather. Except for the engine, all the parts for this model were made by Mr. Jones at home and during a period when materials were very difficult to find. Mr. Kerwin's another pioneer. His model's called the Kerwin Special as it isn't an exact copy of any particular job, but it has the look of a real racing car just the same. Like all other model cars in Britain, it's driven through a centrifugal clutch. This allows the car to be held still with the engine running. Only when the engine's reached full speed do these shoes fly outward and transmit full power to the driving wheels. As usual, the drive is to the front wheels, through a crown wheel and pinion. No differential is fitted. The cars are run in a large circle. All these cars run regularly on their London rooftop track at speeds up to 60 miles an hour. In proportion to their size, this represents nearly 500 miles an hour. Such high performance has required a strictly scientific approach. This starts at the beginning at the design stage. As in full-size cars, what is wanted is the highest possible power-weight ratio. In other words, the greatest power for the least weight. This means cutting weight down to the absolute minimum. It also means getting the maximum power out of your engine. Scientific engine tests are carried out with this homemade dynamometer which finds at what engine speed the greatest power is developed, as in the testing of full-scale engines. Results have been interesting. In some of these tiny engines, ordinary motor spirit is better than 100 octane. The tyre problem has also been tackled scientifically. At high running speeds, the tyres on some cars used to come off. Here's an experiment being carried out on a solid tyre to find at what actual track speed it starts to leave the wheel. In this slow motion picture, you can see that the tyre is at times quite clear of the wheel rim.
tires nowadays are sometimes wired or stuck to the wheel, so they can't fly off. But scientific approach isn't enough. These model makers are ordinary men with jobs to do. They have little spare time for their hobby, and the building of these cars calls for hard work and tremendous enthusiasm. The high performance of the cars demands precision engineering. The model makers bring the greatest care and skill to their hobby and plenty of sheer hard work too. Well, what's on the other side of that? Oh, that's right.